There are people who often say, it's not about what you know, but who you know. After this video, I found out the statement was very true. If we use Hollywood, for example, when we see actors get their awards, we can say, oh, these people all did it on their own. But there was one truth, one I was surprised by, which is that not all of them do it on their own. Some were helped, they knew someone who put them in high positions of power even given their roles in movies by someone in their family. One that crosses my mind often is Coyle Ray. She does music. Her father is Benzino. Benzino co-owns Source Magazine, has been in multiple reality shows, and even had a random beef with Eminem. This means that to some extent, for Koi to boost her career, could Benzino have used his connections to help his daughter? Could Coyle Ray have benefited from her dad? Even if it was just a little bit, I sit and I wonder, many times amazed by the idea of nepotism. They say it is the practice amongst those with power or influence of favoring relatives, friends, or associates, especially by giving them jobs. Nepotism isn't anything new, and it exists everywhere in the NBA. Ronnie James to the basket. Ronnie with a basket bump. It exists at your job and even Hollywood for the most part. Today, I want to dive into this world of nepotism. Who that we see on our TV might have gotten a help in hand? And lastly, is nepotism a terrible thing? Nepotism and rap. In my search for others that have benefited from nepotism, I ran across King Combs, son of Sean Diddy Combs. And the big goal for King is for him to be a famous rapper. For this story, I'll be using a man named John to discover the things that I discovered in my research. While an undisclosed person named John was a seasoned music industry executive, scouting talents, giving out record deals, and organizing music tours for several artists, John prided himself on his ability to spot raw talent. When he watched Christian Combs' first music video, Diddy's Son, type different, he found himself in a sort of dilemma. John had heard of Diddy since Diddy's early days back, back when raw passion and relentless hustles were the currencies of rap. He respected Diddy's relentless journey from a hungry young producer who grew up in Harlem to a mogul now worth $900 million. Yet, seeing Christian, Diddy's son, already signed to his father's label, Bad Boy Records flaunting his wealth in a music video, John felt conflicted. John immediately realized nepotism exists and it exists in rap. Here's the thing. Yo, Joe, you gotta embrace your son Trey a little bit more you gotta push him unapologetically. I'm gonna keep it a being with you. Nepotism is here in hip hop. We all we know it exists in many other industries, but it's here now in hip hop. Did you see how Diddy and his son is acting like they're just number one and number two on the charts? You can't even find what chart they're on. To add to this, Christian Combs, either by his own means or his dad Diddy, has managed to pull a viral feature with Kodak Black and even performing for the BET Awards. While his achievements are all impressive, a question still swirls my mind. Is it Christian's own talent that was securing these features and gigs, or the influence of his dad, who knows a lot of people in the industry? When you ask Diddy that question, this is what he says. And I'm, I'm so proud of him because I had nothing to do with it. I, had not, I didn't call BET, I, I didn't call nobody mm -hmm. and ask him you know I, I did ask a couple of DJs since me and him are both on the charts if he if they could you know saying support the records as family but that's after he had the hit you know what I'm saying besides that he got it on his own and I want to make that clear to people the evidence is clear that when you ask Diddy about the success of his son he will say that he got it on his own but the fact is that even having Diddy's last name alone with everyone knowing you're his son it still holds a lot of weight. To show the difference between someone who came up with money and someone who didn't, let's look at Kodak Black's first music video and compare it to King's first music video. If we look at these two music videos, there's an interesting discovery. For some context, with Kodak's first music video, Project Baby, Kodak had no silver spoon or industry connections. And you can see this as his visuals were less sharper, the production was low in quality, the video was even recorded in a Section 8 neighborhood, and the feel of the video was far removed from 
the glamour of Christian's music video. Wait till you see Christian's. The comparison then takes a turn when you see King's first music video. By the way, Christian is also King. I'm just making sure you guys understood. In Christian's video, he flaunts the wealth and connection. His video is higher in quality, recorded in a large gated community, and it is also featured several high-end props like a white 2017 Lamborghini as well as a Bentley. After I made these comparisons, I was a bit conflicted like John. It was an interesting thing to see, but I couldn't help but question the shift in values. Where does it leave artists like Kodak Black who are trying to make it to the top without any connections? And because Diddy helped his son, does this make the idea of nepotism a bad thing? As we transition into the next chapter, I want you to think of these questions. Nepotism in NBA. For this chapter, with Bronny James being the son of LeBron James, I've been wondering what Bronny James' path to the NBA would look like. Because he's the son of LeBron, would does this mean that Bronny would be drafted to the NBA? LeBron in interviews has been saying, my last year where we played with my son, wherever Bronny is at, that's where I'll be at. Saying he would do whatever it takes to play with the son for one year and that it's not even about the money. LeBron has also made it known that be it any schools that Bronny wants to attend, that he will make it happen. Be it Harvard, Michigan State, or even Princeton University, LeBron will make it happen. I think Bronny can go to any college he wants to. All I have to do is pick up the phone. If Bronny says he wants to go there, he's good enough. With LeBron even going as far as to say, yo, you see my son? He's really, really good, man. Like, he give you a run for your money. When in reality, Bronny is not even all that good compared to his teammates. Man, Bronny is definitely better than some of these cats I've been watching on League Pass today. Shit lightweight hilarious. To where some would even argue that you talking about Bronny? You talking about him? The one riding off his dad? To people even saying that Bronny is not all that good. Bronny is extremely overrated. The only thing he has going for him is that he's playing on an elite team, but he's not even an elite player. I have no idea anyone posting stats like that would get a D1 scholarship, let alone be considered a future NBA player. With people being surprised that Bronny is getting a chance at the NBA, it's nepotism, my guy. It's just what happens when there's nepotism involved. Even if you're underscaled, you still get the job. It's nepotism. It's all nepotism. But it makes me wonder, right? Without LeBron's high profile connection, would Bronny even be able to get this far, even getting into an elite school? For that one, I'll let you decide. What we do know is that the expectation that is set for Bronny because of what his father has done, it is extremely high. People are literally looking at Bronny like, bro, you have to smash this record that your dad set. And you know how hard this would be for Bronny. But considering Bronny growing up in a privileged home, I also wonder, would his drive be that the same of his father's? You know, LeBron didn't grow up in a privileged home, Bronny did. Because LeBron didn't grow up in that privileged home, he had some type of hunger in him. But Bronny, because he grew up as LeBron's son, will he have that same hunger that LeBron had in the beginning? The pressure is very definitely high for Bronny, and I'm thinking he knows that, oh, I have to live up to this. But he's confident, right? When LeBron asks amongst who his kids would be his record, Bronny confidently said that it'd be him. Huh? Do what? He got 38,000 straight. Two, three. Huh? It's gonna be two and three. So we can really only hope that Bronny lives up to the hype because if he doesn't, you know, you become like paper in the media, they will make sure they tear you up. Billionaire kids and nepotism. The bribes of the rich continues. For this part, we shift our focus to Ivy League schools, especially how Ivy League schools take certain bribes for admission. This woman recently went to prison for paying $500,000 to get her daughters into the University of Southern California. They risked it all for a daughter who doesn't even care about school. I do want the experience of like game days, partying. I don't really care about school, as you guys all know. <laughs> when their parents were captured, they were accused of fraud. 
pleading guilty to it in fact. Mother was sentenced to two months in prison, father got five months in prison, and it became this whole big scandal. One thing I think you should note though is that these are the people who have gotten caught doing this. There are two things that Ivy League schools would deny. One, somebody with a low GPA. Two, the fact that they take bribes. This man on your screen is Lex Wexner. He's the billionaire that used to control Victoria's Secret, pretty much CEO. And let's just say Lex Secrets wasn't that victorious. There were sums of donations that he made to Harvard in 1985. He pumped millions into the school. And if you can tell me why, I'll give you $100. You might wonder, is there that much love for Harvard that he has in his heart? Or maybe he's just their biggest fan. He's donating so much money, right? In 2013, Lex upped his gifts dramatically. He went from $2.1 million in a year to $8.5 million. The reason of him increasing this pay was because something close was coming. Well, 2013, interestingly enough, it was it was the year that the first of his four children started his first year at Harvard. Still, he had other kids, so Santa never stopped giving. His foundation gave $26 million to Harvard in 2014, another $7 million in 2015, and another $14.6 million in 2016. Why? Maybe because his three other children needed admission letters into Harvard. Surprisingly, surprisingly, his three other children applied to Harvard in 2014, 2015, and 2017. And guess what? They all got accepted. All three of them now enrolled at Ivy League schools because of their daddy's money. Money buys the world once again. And billionaires just proved it. Yay! Nepotism and Hollywood. Side by side, the list of Hollywood actors and who they're related to, it rings a very interesting bell. If we look at the Karate Kid, for example, right? Waxing with the water of nepotism is Jaden Smith, who you already know to be the son of Will Smith. Looking at a 2018 movie, Black Klansman, that featured John David Washington, you notice that John is Denzel Washington's son. If you looked at Ice Cube from the movie Are We There Yet, you see that the torch has been passed out to his son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., who at the time of this recording has been in 24 Hollywood movies. If we put our focus on Jaden Smith, for example, his father, you already know who he is. There's this water brand that Jaden Smith owns and it's called Just Water. And if you watch this video alone, you can already tell by that video that it's Will Smith who was funding everything regarding Just the Water. Pretty much funding the entirety of Just Water. And despite Jaden Smith, Just Water brand hitting $100 million in evaluation, do you think Jaden Smith would have done everything that he has on his own? Hey, he could, he might not have. Who knows? But when nepotism fails, we can see what happens. Yo, things aren't friendly at all. They look bad. When Will Smith helped Jaden get the role Karate Kid, it was good. The movie showed that Jaden at the time was a natural born talent. You know, he had it in him pretty much to act. But tables turned when Will Smith helped Jaden get the role of Katai Rage on the movie After Earth. I mean, the movie became a box office failure, you know, nobody was, people was like, yo, what is this? This is some, some YouTube production, some, some garbage. What did y'all do here? People was not messing with it. You feel me? People was not digging the movie at all. After Earth, they wanted that joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just wasn't with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the movie sucked. It ruined their friendship and Will Smith himself even said that After Earth was an abysmal box office failure and that what was even worse was his son that took the hit. Fans and press that were absolutely vicious. With him saying that they said and printed things about Jaden that he refuses to repeat. Yeah, and the fact that nepotism can also fail you, it also goes to show that nepotism doesn't mean that there's talent. But the person that benefits from nepotism, they don't really have talent to carry on the role that they were put in. Nepotism pretty much helps you get the job, but does it help you keep it? That's something that you need to think about. 
But the question that I'm most excited to ask is, is nepotism a bad thing? Let's imagine a quick scenario, right? Imagine the company you work for has a job vacancy. Would you recommend your cousin who is fit for the job? They needed someone to fill that role and they needed that someone fast. So would you recommend your cousin? If the answer is yes, I'm sure you probably would. My thing with nepotism at the start of this video was that I was thinking it was bad, right? I thought it was, it wasn't really all that good considering I saw it as favoritism pretty much. My last Keith Lee video, we focused on the topic favoritism. Now we're kind of doing the same. And I felt nepotism was just nothing but family favoritism. But now I don't feel the same way. But still, there's still an issue I have with nepotism. Imagine a band auditioning guitarist. One guitarist knows a few chords, you know, but struggles with pretty complex songs. The other has never touched a guitar. I mean, you can give this guy a guitar, he just won't know what to do with it. He sees the strings in the guitar, but uh, how do you play it? He, uh, he has no idea. If nepotism chooses that guy, the other person that has never touched a guitar in his life, or has zero ideas what the strings do, you give him a guitar and he's just dumbfounded, and he gets chosen for the role, that becomes a problem. That in my idea is bad nepotism. With Jaden and Will Smith's example, their case would also serve as bad nepotism. How many other qualified people could they have used for that role that Jaden got? Imagine how many other casts applied for that same role that were all rejected because Jaden Smith got there first. Nepotism is a double-edged sword. When I know the CEO of McDonald's, for example, and I join his board of executives because I'm his family member, even though I know nothing about what I'm about to do, and it was my family who put me there, where does that leave the others who are way more qualified than I am?